reticle. So this is how the stratospheric ozone is destroyed. Coming next, now we will be looking at the effects of photochemical smog. So first we will be looking at the respiratory effect. So it can cause coughing, shortening of breath, chest tightness in human being. It also causes irritation of nose and eye. And for long term exposure, may reduce elasticity of lungs means the pleural membrane will get damaged of the lungs. Now we will be looking at the effect of photochemical smog on plants. So in this process the ozone which is an ingredient of photochemical smog enters into the plant through stomata and produces byproduct that interferes with photosynthesis. The pan peroxyacetyl nitrate also causes destruction of chloroplast which is the green pigment and inhibits or hinders the electron transport chain ETS and thus reduce plant growth. Now we will be talking about the effects of photochemical smog on materials. Ozone causes crackling of rubber products as all of you know it causes ozonolysis with hydrocarbons. It also causes irritation of eyes with first symptom of photochemical smog. Basically it is caused by pan. So pan is the component of photochemical smog which cause irritation of eye. It is also called as lacrimetal compound. And this irritation is not caused by ozone. The researcher earlier thought it is because of ozone but it is not because of ozone. Pan is responsible for irritation of eye. That's why we call it as lacrimetal compound. So now we will be looking for the conditions which are necessary for the formation of PCS which is photochemical smog. So we need intense solar radiations and warm conditions for the formation of photochemical smog. Minimum horizontal dispersion of pollutants as we have seen in the case of photochemical smog in case of Los Angeles which is surrounded from mountain by three sides. So it's the topography of Los Angeles which make it suitable place for the formation of photochemical smog. There should also be a minimum vertical dispersion due to the inversion. So these are the conditions which are must for the formation of photochemical smog. PCS which stands for photochemical smog can be divided into brown and gray air due to the availability of solar radiation. So we can categorize the photochemical smog into two categories. One is brown air or brown haze and another one is gray air or gray haze. So we will be talking about them one by one. First let's have a look on brown air. So here we have solar radiations which are more intense and photochemical reactions are completely taking place. So this is the advantage in the case of brown air and we call it as brown air because the reactions are complete. In the case of gray air or gray haze solar radiations are less intense and incomplete photochemical reaction leads to the incomplete formation of photochemical oxidants. So incomplete photochemical reactions in the case of gray air which leads to the incomplete formation of photochemical oxidants and photochemical oxidants basically we are talking about air pan and ozone and you must remember that ozone is the most abundant photochemical oxidant followed by pan means priority for ozone is more as compared to pan. Now we will be talking about acid rain which is also a secondary pollutant which is also a secondary pollutant. So we can say that NOx which is an indeterminate mixture of NO and NO2 VOCs volatile organic compounds such as benzene, toluene, ethylene and SO2 produced during combustion of coal and petroleum oxidize in air to produce some of the acids like the oxides of sulfur will produce H2SO4 and the oxides of nitrogen will produce HNO3 which are both the strong acids which are quickly dissolved and wash out to ground as acid rain and acid rain is considered as secondary pollutant. Acid rain would be declared if the pH of the rainwater is less than 5.6 means if the pH of the rainwater is less than 5.6 then we call it as acid rain because normal rainwater 
already have somewhat acidic pH 5.6 to 6.5 so if it is less than the lower limit which is 5.6 we call it as acid rain and why this uh, normal rain water is acidic so this is acidic due to dissolution of CO2 in the water which form H2CO3 carbonic acid which is a weak acid so first let's have a look at how this H2SO4 is formed in the environment in the acid case of acid rain so in the environment we have SO2 which combined with OH radical form SO3H and this SO3 will combine with water molecule to form H2SO4 ultimately and hence this become the component of acid rain. The transformation of SO2 to SO4 particle is gradual and take days so it takes time. During this time sulfur pollution may deposit it on land and water in the form of SO2 and SO4 in either forms and pollution can be deposited by removal first during precipitation which is called as wet deposition second the dry deposition and here some generalized things have been given that what are the heavy metals which talks about specific so heavy metals are the substances which are having specific gravity greater than 4.5 and 5 and specific gravity is basically nothing it is the density of the metal divided by density of water or air and sometimes they ask a question that alkalinity of the water lake water the water body is due to what so HCO3 which is bicarbonate ion and CO3 to minus which is carbonate ion so as shown in the figure you can see the thermal power plants which are having a chimney and while burning coal we release a lot of SOX and NOX NOX basically stands for oxides of nitrogen and NOX basically comprise of NO and NO2 while SOX having SO and SO2 and SO3 so these NOX oxides will surely lead to a formation of HNO3 which is a strong acid and these oxides of SOX will lead to the formation of H2SO4 which is also a strong acid and the moment they come along with the rain in the form of acid rain they make the elements like calcium and magnesium too much mobile the, the, these elements like calcium 2 plus and magnesium 2 plus from soil start leaching and they goes deeper into the layer of the earth and soil become poor in terms of nutrient and as the pH goes down they also make ions like aluminium 3 plus iron more mobile so these aluminium 3 plus iron are more available for plants so we can conclude from this acid rain phenomena that concentration of aluminium 3 plus increase now they become too much mobile because of the acidic pH acidity of the lake water or the water body will also increase because we are getting acid rain and the water of the lake will be crystal clear water due to the flocculation of aluminium 3 plus means the aluminium 3 plus cause flocculation of iron as we can correlate with our elementary knowledge here the hardy Shuji rule sorry of coagulation applied that oppositely charged particles are effective in causing coagulation so you can correlate that aluminium 3 plus ion cause coagulation of flocculation but the lake would be physiologically dead means lake will be having crystal clear water but there will be no physiological activity aluminium 3 plus which is toxic especially for fishes because it damages the gill tissue of fish means it damages the gills this is a very important point and generally the pH of that lake water which is acidified because of acid rain is around 6 to 8 as the pH of lake water drops to about 6 the acid sensitive organism die means the organisms are not able to tolerate the acidity they will die and as the pH lowers to 5 means if the pH goes to 5 virtually all the fishes die although acidified lakes will have crystal clear water means the water will be clear 
such lakes are considered as physiologically dead means there will be no activity and in that lake so the lake was physiologically dead right and hope you understanding the information which is provided by the ASS Science Foundation, Delhi.